All right, well, today we have uh, Sheriff Tom Knight. And how did we get you to come in here? I was really shocked you were so willing. Well, you promised me a glass of wine at Hyde Park, right? Oh, that's right. So I'm in, I'm oh, in. All right. That's all it takes, I'm easy. <laughs> okay, let that be on tape here. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff says he's easy. <laughs> For a glass of wine. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, we have a couple of topics, and one of them is medical marijuana. Mm. No, actually marijuana in general. Uh, we're going to talk about body cameras. Um, I'm going to talk about the transgender mm -hmm. uh, bill that is, you know, made through the committee. Uh, oh, I didn't the, know. Yeah, you do. Yeah, well, we'll go into that a little bit later in the show, and then anything else might pop up today. So, where do we want to go first? Is Bruce Jenner walking in? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> Not funny. We're going to have to get him one of those deadpan sighs. <laughs> okay, so um, let's let's talk about body cameras. There's been, you know, a big issue, especially between the city and the mm -hmm. county, in regard to the police officers mm -hmm. wearing body cameras. Now they do have body cameras that they're starting to launch in the city. Uh, you know, Chief DePino has been in support of that. Mm -hmm. However, you've got on record, Sheriff, as in not support of that. Do you want to talk about? It? Well, Roe, it isn't between the city and the county. I think some media outlets would like to make it between the chief and I, and that's totally not accurate. We. We get along very well. She's in my office today for a meeting. I'll be in her office tomorrow at 8.30. So for anybody to think that she and I don't get along, that's, that's totally uh, not a, a, a proper thought process. The media likes to drive that. So, um, But, you know, we have different philosophies of it, and I'm not against body cameras. I think that body cameras are here, and they're going to be here to stay. Um, I just think in the state of Florida right now, we're not ready for them. The technology has surpassed the laws that we have on our books. Um, and if you look, if you're an attorney or anybody out there, if you look at the 934 statutes that are almost 50 years old in the state of Florida right now, um, it doesn't provide any opportunity through that statute for law enforcement um, to redact anything out of a video that would be taken of somebody who has not committed a crime, was talking to a police officer, or in my case, my deputies, and that my will to use body cameras and put them on my workforce is there. I don't have a problem with it. They're on our doorstep, they're gonna be here, it's gonna be part of modern day policing. Um, the, the, the funny thing about body cameras, two, three years ago when they started coming out, they were sold to us by the vendors as, you can use them and archive your, your evidence and use them in court, really cut down your court time and stuff. And then after Ferguson, Missouri it turned into, boy, you can really monitor your employee's behavior through body cameras. And to me, that's not the intent of body cameras. The intent of body cameras is to archive evidence and use them um, when we're out there patrolling and doing our jobs. The funny part about employee behavior is ultimately the chief executive officer of the law enforcement agency, in this case me, I'm ultimately responsible for a thousand employees and their behavior, not a body camera. If I gotta have a body camera to monitor their behavior, I'm in the wrong business or I have the wrong people hired. To me, at the end of the day, I'm a privacy person in that when we show up at somebody's doorstep for loud noise, music, um, and they're in there having a drink, and we live in an area that's influential, a lot of influential people, um, a lot of celebrities, and that if they're out there having a drink in their driveway and we walk up, there's no way we can redact that. And so some people will say, well, can't they just turn the video camera off? My answer to that is no. When you deal with law enforcement officers, when you give discretion, you open it up for tons of civil litigation. Or if a crime should occur while the officer's there unexpectedly, the question's always going to come up, what did he or she have to hide? Why didn't they have it on? So there's always going to be scrutiny if you allow discretionary use of it. I can't get 600 deputies to use it in the same manner in the same time all the time. So when we go to them, we're going to turn them on, we're going to leave them on, and we're going to redact out what we don't want the public to have. Or we don't want anybody to be embarrassed when we show up at their house to help them out with a the domestic situation. Um, I really asked the legislative delegation here when it first came out was um, I went before them to ask them to look at the 934 statutes and make some modifications to it purely for the fact to give us that opportunity to use the cameras in the right format to archive crime to do what the public wants to see critical situations be um, in the public eye when, when there's scrutiny on them and for the fact of but, but to not to embarrass people that's not what we're here for. So, Sheriff, if I might add, uh, or ask you then, what, what would you say generally, not being a lawyer, but what would you say generally um, should a fixed 934 statute say to allow it where you could still have the citizenry be relatively comfortable that the Sheriff's Department or law enforcement is not hiding something that they don't want to show up because it's embarrassing 
to the agency. Well, you know, it's funny when you get into these laws because every attorney gets a piece of them and they start to, you know, I have three in-house legal counsels and they certainly can craft a law that would protect the citizens, protect the sheriff's office from exposure to any civil litigation and to allow us that opportunity to redact things for people's privacy rights. Do I have the exact terminology of it? No, I, I don't. I don't I bet, but I can tell you that I asked my legal staff, um, I wanted to go to body cameras, I really did, and we have 10 of them. We haven't put them into use yet because I'm not comfortable with doing it until we see some modifications in the laws. And we're in the middle of legislative session right now, so who knows what they're going to come out of legislative session with. My thoughts are they're going to come out with something that's going to you know, be crafted in a manner that's, that's, that's going to give us an opportunity to do it. But until I can be assured that we can redact things so that people aren't embarrassed when a, when a husband and wife are arguing, the children are crying, um, the husband or the wife are in distress, and the world is falling down around them, and we've all been there. Until they can give me something to work with, my body cameras will stay in the bags. So the reason that I ask is because, uh, full disclosure, I, I have a son-in-law who's a Manatee County deputy. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, 99% of cops are good cops and, and get in crummy situations right. every single day. I think the cameras would help reveal a lot of that because everything right now goes through a filter sure. of the news media. The cameras would help. I feel like, uh, just from my perspective as a civilian, that the cameras actually can help defend the cops' integrity a lot. But it, but it would have to be done in a way in which the, the broad citizenry still generally trusts that the, the law and the system is allowing to be revealed what needs to be revealed. You're exactly right. And you know, I, I'll tell you this, I, I've worked for three law enforcement agencies 20 years and I'm certainly not perfect nor are my employees perfect, but this is probably the best workforce I've ever been around. And cops aren't perfect and they will do things and say things that you regret and I've done things regret it. But I would not have a problem in one bit putting my deputies in these body cameras because it will reveal how they get talked to, um, how we didn't get talked to 28 years ago, how our society has changed, and really to archive those areas that our deputies work in every day where people don't want to go, but we go, and the way they get treated. And sometimes they get treated absolutely terribly. Now, and I would love to have that archive to show people right. and show the community when something critical should happen to pull that video out and say, there's your answer why that happened, why that deputy got involved in that confrontation with that person. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk in specific about a Senate bill that is trying to be passed about regulating the body cameras. And, and we're going to continue on with the concerns also that I have about them, and I'm sure the sheriff will, 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 um, will agree in how they are used once the footage is put into a request. So we stay talking this. about uh, body cameras and police officers, and I want to bring everybody up to speed. Uh, right now there is a bill in committee, SB 248. It creates a public records exemption for audio or video recording made by a law enforcement officer in the course of the officer performing his or her official duties and responsibilities if the recording is taken within the interior of a private residence, taken on the property of a facility that offers health care, mental health care, or social services, is taken at the same time of a medical emergency, is taken at a place where a person recorded or depicted in the recording has a reasonable expectation of privacy, shows a child younger than 18 years of age inside a school or a school property, or shows a child younger than 14 years of age in any location. That seems to kind of appeal mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. what your your concerns are. Right. I, again, going back, it'd be a lot easier to change the 934 statutes. We have to worry about it. But again, that sounds good. It's got to go through the legislative body. I haven't had a chance to have my legal staff study that yet, so I can't really comment on sure. the effects of us. One thing that we need to be aware of is the fact that when you have that many exceptions and stipulations um, to allow those exemptions, it takes on average... Um, four seconds to review one second of video. Mm -hmm. So um, we will have to hire an entire staff of people, train them in that law, have them interpret that law, because I can't hire 15 attorneys to sit around and interpret it um, to make sure they do it properly. So we'll have to hire people, train them in that law, and then set them in there and let them sit there daily reviewing these videos. And you can imagine the cost for us, and it's not a money issue for us, the startup cost of body cameras is not the purchasing of the cameras themselves, it's the continuous maintenance of them, use of them. So 
we did an estimate that to um, equip our sheriff's office with one point one million dollars startup cost, and that's without storage of wow. megabytes. Well, so where are we going to store all the data? Right, and that brings up the logistical question. I mean, how are you going to handle when you get a public rec public records re request when you do it now and you get those in writing? You know that you can just easily black it out with a magic yes. marker the sure. the portions. But when it comes to video and storing the video, editing the video, I mean that seems like it would be a logistical nightmare. It would be, and there's a timeline on it, and I think you're already seeing it start you saw the first lawsuit right. filed last Thursday or right. Wednesday on it that in, in Seattle the Seattle Citizen Police Review Panel um, told the city of Seattle to put all their body cameras in a box and store them because a citizen out there said I want all the video for a certain amount of time and they said well we don't have the staffing ready to get that for you he said well you should have thought about that before you put them into play and that's basically what you're seeing go on here locally well in fact the ACLU of mm -hmm. Florida was contacted about this and they said that these exceptions are blank checks for the LEO opacity and abuse and I quote if this was really about privacy it would apply to what officers can practically release on their own as well uh, so this is really just about shielding police misconduct. If police want to control the narrative, then they can release what they want. That's true. And yeah. yeah, so it's all open for interpretation, which again leads to civil litigation lawsuits, and we get bogged down with lots of money being spent on a lot of attorneys <laughs> who see things differently. But you probably have to hire almost an entire different new division to oh. just handle video, video hire editing. more paralegals, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. oh for sure. It's, it sounds like really what what will happen here is. We'll get a law, maybe we'll get an amended law later, we'll get a lot of lawsuits, mm -hmm. it will work through the courts, and somewhere several years down the line, um, during a, a, after a mess of situations, we'll have something that basically has a legal precedent in the court that most people are agreeing on and that everybody else will have to live with. Right. Yeah. And, that, and that's going to be a lot of time, money, and effort. And a lot of money, too. Yeah, a lot yeah. of money. Yeah, I don't know if I'd necessarily uh, be happy with a police officer who knocked on my door, especially unexpectedly, right. knowing there's a camera now staring mm -hmm. me in the face. Um, whether it's appropriate or not, I would feel incredibly awkward. I mean, I get it when we're talking about the police officer on the street, um, you know, inspecting a crime or dealing with someone unruly. Violent That's confrontation. A violent confrontation. That's a good thing. Sure. But maybe you're just answering a call and you go knocking on the door and, and they're, they're the private citizen. And then that, well, that, that video of you in curlers in your pajamas shows up you. when you're running for office yeah, or five on years Facebook later, page, right? Yes, yeah. somebody posted. You, right. One of your loved yeah. ones, one of your loved ones, got killed in a car crash, and we're there at two in the morning telling you telling the you unfortunate, the and you're on video. But and isn't that is that what you really want? Isn't that where this time? exception would come in, where it says it's taken at a place or person or recorded or depicted in the recording has a reasonable expectation a of privacy? privacy. But All that, that again assumes that the police officer is going to be turning it on and off and interpreting the law. I when wouldn't even say field. that because I would imagine that they're not allowed to turn it on and off. It would just no. It would have to be done later. It would have to be done later. It and be the editing that process that, that would, they'd have to spend a million dollars a year wow. on. And We'd I'd be concerned. It if that was forgotten right. and then all of a sudden or it was leaked right. in some form or, or fashion. hacked I mean or hacked as well if they did miss it if we did miss it and it leaks out and then we got a lawsuit from a celebrity yeah. or a citizen who feels like they were violated plus I mean who's going to interpret that reasonableness every attorney interprets sure. reasonableness differently there's no perfect solution oh. but there is I would tell you that this sheriff I want my people in body cameras I don't have a problem putting my workforce in them but I'm also paid to keep us out of civil litigation. I'm not willing to spend the taxpayers' money right now to fight civil litigation. I'll let somebody else pay it. I'll let the laws get changed, and then we'll we'll roll into them eventually. Um, but I'm gonna let somebody else flip the bill on that one first. All right, that works for me. All right, let's move on to the next topic as well, um, one that's near and dear to our show's heart. <laughs> 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 the Florida Cannabis Action Network is now developing a 2016 voter initiative to legalize marijuana based on the likelihood that the Florida legislature will be unwilling to create a comprehensive medical-only program in the coming weeks. In other words, they're going to be pushing for recreational marijuana as opposed to medical marijuana. Now, this is a different group than uh, who we saw John Morgan pushing the medical marijuana. He, too, has said that he will be um, coming back with another amendment for medical marijuana, but this is, a, this is a little bit different. I know you were incredibly outspoken, yeah. and so was I, on opposing sides, which is why I owe you a glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. But what is your take on uh, this right now, Sheriff? Well, number one, I, I interpret this as keeping the pressure on the legislative body to create a law. 
Um, number two, when you have 58% of our citizens, like it or not, um, whether I'm not the morality police or the ethics police, but when you have our citizenry saying that they want to have medical marijuana passed, um, we as sheriffs have told and asked the legislative body to pass something. Um, we mainly fought it purely for the fact we didn't believe it belonged in the Constitution. But um, medical or not, um, we're not the physicians, I'm not, uh, I'm not the morality police or the ethics police, I'm a cop. And at the end of the day, when you have 58% of our state saying that they want something, we as sheriffs believe that if it does help people who have HIV um, and these chronic illnesses, that is what it's being uh, touted as, that we're fine with it. Um, we believe, and they, we've told the legislative body two weeks ago in a press conference, is that we, we have our stance on it. But, you know, if you have a little girl who's having seizures, if you have a person who has HIV, if you have a person who has Alzheimer's or cancer. AOS, cancer, is that that's what it's directed for. And I think that the citizens want that to be for those people to use them, whether it's proven to be medical or not. At the end of the day, 58% of our citizens want them. We're asking the legislative body to pass something. Ron? Um, I have... I I actually separate paths just a little bit with the sheriff on this um, because I see medical marijuana as basically a gateway law to recreational marijuana. That's the only real purpose. But now they're asking you for can, recreational. Yeah, but like he says, I mean, that's really to keep yeah. the pressure on. The point is, whether it was Colorado or Washington State, you had um, both of those had medical marijuana for several years first. The population got all comfortable with that, mm -hmm. and then they shifted it. They got passed. Um, recreational marijuana. Yeah, so now they're going right for it. Right, now there's a whole bunch of other states around that have had medical marijuana for a while. That's exactly where they're going in Florida. Uh, to me, recreational marijuana in Florida, a tourism state with Disney and beaches, absolute disaster. But that is the that is the point of the people. That's their ultimate end goal yes. for the medical marijuana is to get recreational marijuana. And that's why, to me, it needs to be stopped right there. Now, if there are those people with cancer and other things that need only that, own, yes, and that it I, I, I'm no expert on this, but I, I understand that it doesn't have to be smoked. It can be separated out. It can be taken in other fashions. 100% for that. Really? So you would, you're would you for edibles? You're for... Pill, pill form. Pill, but why not edibles? What's the difference? Well, well everything that I've read about edibles in, in uh, Rita uh, Maureen Dowd's column on edibles in uh, Colorado, she had quite the trip. For one thing, it's far more powerful. So it needs to be controlled in a pharmacological way in a pill. That, to me, is a perfectly that, legitimate way. That's your way. comfort zone. That's my only comfort zone. Well, I think with, when it comes to edibles, too, I always worry about young children and them getting into the hands of the wrong people. If it's an edible, what's the form of the edible? I think when you have it in a pill, it's a little bit more, Good point. Uh, you know, people know more that it's okay, but, not. Okay, but you're only, so your only, the only problem is how it's delivered, not having it in general, because medical cannabis... Whether in, in many form or fashion, that, that can all be tailored to the individual. Um, but you don't have any objections to medical marijuana. I don't. If it's true, and it appears to be, that there are some people where that's the only thing that provides them relief, then I don't see withholding that relief. But not in a smokeable fashion, not in the, the sort of gateway fashion in which it's used to lead to, to heavier Recreational. Drugs. Yeah, Like well, Washington, well, Washington well, D.C. just did it. Washington, actually, there's there are 13 states poised to go re recreational, recreational this time and they, around. And they all had medical first. Yeah. Actually, there are over 30 states that yeah. have had medical marijuana for a really, really long time. Mm -hmm. So this recreational is, if I, I listen, I'm a supporter of recreational marijuana, so right. I think go right to it. Because every time we argued about it the last time, all the arguments for recreational were brought into the medical marijuana argument. And it didn't hold true. But that's the argument that we had, so let's have this argument. So are you comfortable with having a state that is focused, that has 100 million people coming a year for tourism? Sure. Um, having, well, I'm not. They drink wine. <laughs> they drink wine. They, they, please, we, we have lots of other ways, mind-altering uh, things that we ingest. And What's we have the, enough trouble controlling ourselves with those. Oh, yeah, because that's what we want. We want an end no, state. No, no, we don't we want, want to the be state. Able to I'm talking about individuals. Wait, exactly, but that's my point. There, I don't see any difference between a glass of wine and a hit on a joint. DUI, well, the think, influence would be... I think you have to think about the quality of life issue too. I mean, I don't know if any of you have been to Colorado since they passed it, but you do, I have, and you do see a difference, I will tell you. What difference I mean, you do you see? see? You see dispensaries, 
you see them all over the place on the way out to the mountains. You see, and they're not, I mean, they're kind of like old, shambled buildings that they represent a lower quality of life, in my opinion. You see um, signs in the airport. You know, there's a shop that said, get sconed. And they are just, you know, I think the marketing people are just out there everywhere. I think it it is a quality of life issue that we would see, ha we would see our quality of life deteriorate here in Sarasota, yeah, but, see, I believe, and I, I'm not saying I believe one way or another. I, I'm kind of in the middle on this topic. I think medical marijuana, yes, I agree for all the reasons that you already spoke about. But recreational, I think that there's a lot of things to consider before we can go full out recreational marijuana use in Florida. I mean, I again, however, we you can drink, you can smoke. I don't see. I mean, there's a bar on every corner. But I think there's a big difference between a wine bar and a medical and a marijuana dispensary. Yeah, but but you're big talking difference. again, a wine bar versus the local sports pub versus, you know, just your your down and out, you know, uh, dive bar. That's it's the same thing. If you if if your only comfort issue is that you want the look and appearance of more of an upscale place, then that's still not an issue about. The actual substance itself. Well, that's, that's not my about... only comfort issue. It's just one that I bring up because I've actually seen it. I've seen, yeah. you know, what Colorado has kind of not turned into, but I've seen what it is moving towards. I know the governor who opposed it originally is now in support of it. I, I, do you think we have a problem with the UIs? With the what? Driving under the influence. Sh uh, well, actually, well, you know, obviously, you know, it's a trick year. question. That one's a year. One's a year. Uh, I, I think any law enforcement um, area knows that we have a we have a major problem with DUIs. Where do everybody you, does do it, but that's what this does. Do you think it's going to change? Yes, the way it, is it, it expands the eye. You now you can be driving under the influence with a whole new drug. You are drug. already, are you not? You, that is something that you deal with now, anyway. Correct. Right. When so you, he'll get you, to deal with it more. With contribution to this discussion is right now a Miami Republican has filed a Florida House bill that would limit, some say invalidate, transgender non-discrimination ordinances throughout the state. His law proposes single-sex public facilities require that the use of single-sex facilities be restricted to persons of sex for which facility is designated, prohibits knowingly and willfully uh, entering into a single-sex public facility designated for or restricted to persons of other biological sex provides exemptions, provides private cause of action against violators, provides for preemption. This is a typical law. What the hell did I just say? Well, yeah, so, so what, if I'm, exactly. what if I'm bringing my, uh, my four-year-old son into the women's room? Is exactly. that okay? No, I mean, it's not okay. Well, I do that all the time. I know, and it's a problem, Kenneth. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, what this is, it, 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 wow. you're correct, and that's one of the things that you would be concerned with about this, because this, what this law is essentially saying, that unless you are biological in your sex, you cannot enter into, a, unless you're biologically a girl, you can't enter into the women's room, and if you're biologically a boy, you can't enter the boys' room. It's, Rod, you look like you're ready. I, I, just, I just exactly. need to explode because this just <laughs> seems like a, an incredibly weird conversation yeah. to ever have to have, but we do. But what was interesting to me is Planet Fitness just had this huge problem because they're this comfortable with everybody, don't offend everybody, anybody, that's their culture. Mm -hmm. Well, a guy walked into the women's locker room there who's a complete guy. He's not pretending trans. He just feels like a woman. He just feels like one. And it freaked out one of the women, and she complained because she said there's a guy in the men's room. Her membership was revoked because she made him uncomfortable with it. You know, that's the direction where this sort of, I'm reading the story right here. Um, and and I'd, I'd seen it earlier, <laughs> but I'd seen it earlier today, and it was like, it was just, I was going to put it on Facebook hoping to elicit some comments. On my page, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tag Susan Nylon. Defense, please. But, but that's the sort of thing we're talking about because you have, it's not just LBGT, whatever. I mean, that acronym now just goes right off the edge of a cliff. There's so many of them. But it does include what, what do you what feel on? like. Uh, no, it doesn't include. I think there's, yeah, a, there's it does. a specific That's one of the definition parts of, the of a transgender individual when they are going through the process of having a sex change. We're not talking about just some some guy who is you know a pervert dressing up as a woman to get into the women's room. But that, I will California say, has that law. That really, when you think about and it. And what do I mean, we do? Crotch check? Sheriff Knight's going to have a whole new transgender division. Uh, you yeah, know, exactly. Major, not until I turn them out. Definitely body cameras. Not under my issue. command. <laughs> yeah, body Oh, yeah, body cameras. <laughs> California has a law on the books now that requires all the public schools to allow that for their sports. 
So in other words, if you have a high school oh, sports team, if a boy feels like he's a girl, he should be able to be on the girls' sports team, and he can See, be in okay, the girl. But there's a difference between somebody who feels like it as opposed to somebody who's going through the process. Right. And what I I'm saying is they have that law. Well, I don't know books. what the law is, so I can't really comment on it. I think it's kind of cool. It could really exploit it. I think it already has been. <laughs> okay, well, We're talking teenage boys here. I mean, Seriously. Really, I mean, can't we just stick to the laws that are in place right now? I mean, if someone is, you know, exposing themselves in a restroom, then that's against the law. But if somebody wants, I mean, who cares? Exactly. Really? Now, a lot of people are proposing unisex bathrooms, which I actually have a problem with. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing if it's a single, no, thank you. single stall, but I have enough problems Guys with. don't exactly keep their public restrooms clean either. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. That's a whole nother sharp. topic. Well, I, I, held back on, I held back on a boy-girl joke earlier in the show here, and now I'm feeling like I shouldn't have. I think it's just un unfortunate that it opens up a lot of more discrimination, uh, a lot more abuse, a lot more people feel power to take it into their own hands and seriously right. I mean I think there's a lot of issues with this that is really unnecessary and I think yeah. overreaching as far as the government goes um, if somebody is going through the process of having that sex change then we just need to recognize it it's not easy you can't just decide you just don't feel like it you know there's a large process to go through um, to have that surgery a, a lot of psychological testing a lot of counseling goes on years before they actually even start the process to go ahead and just assume that somebody is there. You know, and I have to say, I actually know transgender people. You would never know, okay? But because they're going through the process, what are you going to do? Send them to the send them back to the other room? Yeah, but seriously, how are you going to monitor that and control it? So someone, a transgender, uses a restroom, a public mm -hmm. restroom facility. Someone sees it. And then what sends a note into the police office yeah, to send exactly. them a letter in the mail? It just makes no sense. I just personally think it's absolutely ridiculous, and we should we should be concerned about the fact that the legislature feels they need to legislate this. Okay.